So, I made some progress in transferring um, this photo out onto the page. As you can see, it's different than when I last sh presented it. Um, instead of having him straight um, with one solid cell sort of static across the page, I went through the photos of this whole scene and three photos later I chopped that up and put the feet down here so you have more of a movement through time you know because when it was just straight it just went boom 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 and it stopped and it just felt too abrupt now I have boom 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 <laughs> if that makes any sense um they say that comic books, it's a lot like snakes and ladders. So you have ladders, like one cell, c cells stacked up um, upon each other, like this cell, and this cell, and this cell, and this cell. And then you have snakes running through them, which is the content. So the snake would be this ball snaking through the page and start going up here with these guys. Snakes and ladders, man. So I edited this to be a little bit more like snakes and ladders. Um, let's see, I've, I'll show you what I've got. So, Got his head all the way down. I started, um, I've been watching a lot of videos uh, from comic book artists, Marvel artists, um, like, especially a lot recently I've been watching Jim Lee, who works for DC now, but he worked for Marvel. He's a master, man. He's like 54 now. He's been around since the 90s. When he first came out, he first came out on um, Uncanny X-Men, this series, in 1991. And that's still like the greatest selling comic book series of all time. And he's, and he's a master. And I'm so happy he puts out all these instructional videos on YouTube and shows what he does. Um... And, and been watching a bunch of other random artists, so I'm forgetting their names, I'm so bad with names, but basically what Marvel, what all these guys say is that what you should do when you're drawing anything, and it's including the human form, is break it down into simple shapes, cones, spheres, and cylinders. So, and basically, I'll show here because it's the leg. This is one cone. This is another cone. You know, see how it starts big and it gets smaller. Cone starts big, gets smaller. Cone. The arm is basically like two cones. Starts big, gets smaller. Cone gets big, starts smaller. Cone. The hand is sort of like a square. You could break that down. When you're first plotting out the image on a page, just to get a sense of its three-dimensionality, you know what I'm saying? The head is a sphere that is not a, a perfect sphere. It gets narrower towards the end, you know, because the chin is much narrower than the, the top of the head. You could... You know, if you watch How to Draw the Marvel Way, I actually had that book when I was a little kid, but the chest area is basically a circle. But you can also, I'm watching Jim Lee, he does it differently, almost draws it. He'll add in the dent of the rib cage. That's how I did it. I'm trying to block it all out. I started pen transferring it by measuring everything. I could show you that in a little bit, but... Um, I'm sort of doing what Jim Lee did where I'm not blocking out his chest as a normal sphere. 
I'm doing it with the indentation of his um, rib cage. And then there's another sphere here in the pelvis area. This doesn't look quite right. Should probably make it bigger. Although, I don't know. I feel like it ends in his crotch area. So. And then, of course, um, as you can see, I overlaid cones outside, outside of where his legs will actually be. Just to give me a... Um, just to sort of scaffold the thing, just to give me a, a, an outline to work within so I have a better, it doesn't, I just want to have a better sense of what I'm drawing. I want to have a better sense of anal uh, anatomy so that I'm not just copying things by measuring them out and then figuring them out after the fact while I'm do polishing it all. I want to have a good sense from the beginning. I think one thing that'll help me do is it'll help me decide where to put the shadows and it'll help me decide where to put wrinkles in the shirt. Say this sphere area, right? This is more solid than down here, whereas they don't have a a shape really for this area because this isn't really bony. There's no bones in here except for the spinal cord. So it's it's not a sol it's not represented by a solid mass like a sphere here and a sphere here. Uh, and that's where I put the most wrinkles because all of a sudden the shirt's bending inwards, it's bending to this, his body's bending inwards, his body's bending to the side. And so it just will guide me in showing where to put wrinkles. Like even this tiny wrinkle here, I know how important this is now because it indicates where his rib cage is. And I, it just, so it just helps me out understand it on a theoretical level. Um, and that's, that's really it as far as that goes. I've been, I work today. I'm working this weekend. I got to work the weekend every, like once a month. Um, uh, my job is, I'm an essential employee, that which means that, you know, my job is somebody always has to be working in case of a crisis or something. Um... So, but today was so laid back. I spent a lot of time thinking about my drive. <laughs> and, um, I'm trying to think how I'm going to shade it in. I've been watching YouTube videos and learning a, and a lot about watercolors and watercolor brushes and watercolor pencils. And it would be great if I can incorporate some watercolor. I don't even think in regular color, like not in gr green or blue or red, but with just maybe gray, add some gray tone. Sort of like Lone Wolf and Cub would have it. If you can combine watercolor with cross hatching and stippling and pens, you can have a, sort of just has a Japanese, you know, samurai aesthetic, which I would like. Um, and then you could do a lot of interesting things with inks because one problem I've been having is um, trying to figure out how to do the actual backgrounds, you know, so, like these trees. It's just a mess. It's ugly. I mean, how do I incorporate that? Actually, I've been playing around with this photo on my phone and changing contrast levels and all that stuff. And actually, when you start doing that, um, all of a sudden shapes really strong distinct shapes start to appear in the trees in the backgrounds that are powerful and simple and it just because the when you play around with contrast and colors it just breaks things down sometimes in the very simple structures so i'm gonna have to print this out again with the super contrast and work from that um and because i do want to incorporate background and even when you play around with contrast parts of the court become super illuminated. Like you see how there are these streaks in the court. Those become super intensified. And I want to incorporate that. And I don't want to do it painstakingly. I want to do it abstractly. I want this to have a very light and very abstracted feel. I don't want to just do a very simple straightforward I draw this guy, I outline him in pens, I shade him in normally, 
Same thing with the core blah, background, blah, blah, blah. I want to do something that is unique and very abstracted and simple and beautiful and light. And I think I really have an idea of how to do that. One thing they say is that, and I've never done this because I've never actually tried to learn anything. But one thing they say until now, and but one thing they say is that the lines away from the light should be the darkest because that's where the shadow is strongest. It seems obvious, but that's a, that is a great thing to know. So when I'm inking this in, I'm going to have the lines away from him the absolute strongest. Uh, and then I won't maybe even add lines to the areas that are capturing the light. And I will just fill that in with a screen tone thing I have planned. I'm going to put in dots everywhere on the page and just erase them in parts where objects are, like the bleachers and the people and stuff, and then leave areas and then erase bits here and there to add, create textures on the court and in the backgrounds. And I want to be very abstracted. It's hard to explain. I got to end this video because I'm running out of time. All right, I'm going to end it. I'm going to come back because I've got more, man. I've got more ideas. I'm just, I'm building, building, building on this thing. Oh,